12, we're going to deal with um, cash flows and preparing the statement of cash flows. So um, we talked about this in the very first chapter, and I said, oh, we'll get back to it um, when we get to the end of the course. Um, so here we are. But the purpose of the statement of cash flows is it's it's really ca it's really focuses on everything from a cash standpoint. So we kind of do away with that accrual based accounting that we were making adjusting entries for and, and trying to make our financial statements as accurate as possible. Um, now we're saying, OK, really, how did the cash flow? And we're going to group it by um, three different activities. Um, that will kind of show how the how the company is using cash and receiving cash um and then and then what you know where again where are they spending it and then how that ending cash balance is calculated so the importance of the cash flows again when we break it down it'll be an operating section an investing section and a financing section so um we want to know how are we actually earning cash? Is cash coming in through our day-to-day -day operations? And then what if it is coming in and we have positive cash flow, what are we then doing with it? Are we making good investment decisions? Um, so we're investing back in ourselves and maybe getting new equipment or or acquiring a, a, a you know a competitor that takes us into a new geographic area or whatever. Um, and then from a financing standpoint, how are we how are we financing these long-term investments? Do we have the cash to do it or are we borrowing? Do we have the cash to pay down debt? So it's not it's a nice little statement, a one-page statement that kind of shows you all of those um, flows so you can kind of see how healthy the company is. Um, so we'll talk about cash and cash equivalents. So cash equivalents are things that are readily convertible into cash so they're so they're very close to maturity and they're not going to be impacted by any changes in the market um so our our cash flow like i said on the a few slides back are three activities that we are going to break the statement of cash flows down into our operating activities investing activities and financing so the thing i want to say is operating always think okay that's my day-to-day -day business that's what i am doing for that's how i'm trying to make money investing is not necessarily like investing in the stock market it could be but it's more than likely investing into the business itself so you're getting bigger you're acquiring new assets you're uh, expanding um, financing is how are you how are you financing these investing activities so if I'm if I am getting bigger and I'm building a new plant how am I doing that did I get a bank loan did I issue bonds did I issue stock um, again those are the three main ways that companies raise capital um, so here gives you some cash inflows and outflows from operating activities so our cash inflows are primarily coming from the cat from the sales to our customers it could also be interest revenue or dividend revenue, but it's going to primarily be um, the sales to our customers. And then our cash outflows is paying expenses, paying salaries and wages, um, paying suppliers for goods and services, paying taxes, paying interest. Investing, um, again, focus. Let, let's focus on the cash flow outflows because these are going to be more common. We're buying plant assets. We're buying intangible assets. Um, we could be buying investments. The cash inflows would come from if we sell a plant asset or we sell an investment. Um, so the, a healthy company, a, a growing company, is going to have more cash outflows in investing than they have inflows. If they have cash inflows in investing, it's telling you they're selling off their assets, which you know, think in business when you hear, oh, look, you know, a company's liquidating. That's what it, they do when they liquidate. They sell off their assets and they get cash back in the business. So a healthier company is going to have the cash outflows. Now, financing could go either way, like with a healthy company. It could be they're raising capital, so they're, so they're um, issuing common stock or preferred stock or they're getting bonds or, or, or loans, and that money is coming in. Or again, they could already be a very mature company where they have plenty of cash coming in, so they don't need to borrow, but they are going to pay dividends. They're going to 
pay off their debt or their bonds payable, and then that's going to be money going out. And then the, the, the cash flow statement is built or created by looking at our changes in our balance sheet. So we're going to look at our balance sheet and say, okay, how did it change and how does that impact our cash flow statement? So our current assets and our current liabilities, those changes will go into the operating section. Our long-term assets will go into the investing section, the long-term cha the changes to the long-term assets. And then the changes to any long-term liabilities or owner's equity goes into financing. So you can kind of break that income statement, or sorry, that balance sheet down into sections to say, okay, if I have a change in these current assets or current liabilities, that's all operating. Any change in long-term assets, that's all investing. Any change in debt and equity, that is all financing. You can have non-cash financing and investing activities. And if you do have those, they would be listed at the bottom of the cash flow statement. They would not be included in the detail. So maybe we're getting, we're buying a truck and we're getting a loan. Maybe we're um, leasing a long-term asset and taking on a long-term lease. Um, you know, those types of things. So the format of the statement of cash flows, again, we've got our three sections, cash flow from operating activities, cash flows from investing activities, and cash flow from financing. And then if it's a positive number, it would be net cash provided by operating activities. If it's a negative number, it would be net cash used by investing activities. So just make sure the provided or used goes along with the cash flow. Then we are going to subtotal those three sections up, and that will be our increase or our decrease in cash. We will add that um, to our, our uh, beginning balance, our, pri our prior period end, which are, would be our beginning cash balance, and that should tie out to our ending cash balance. And then you always want to make the double check to actually tie these numbers out to the balance sheet to make sure that that is your change in cash on the balance sheet and that is your ending balance of cash on the balance sheet. So um, when we prepare the statement of cash flows, um, we look at our change in cash, like I said, is it an increase or a decrease on the balance sheet? Then we're gonna go through all of our operating activities, then our investing activities, then our financing activities, and then compute that change and then compare it back again to the balance sheet. So when we analyze our non-cash accounts, um, we're looking at our, our non-cash assets. So they've kind of rearranged this accounting equation to say we're focused again on these changes in any non-cash assets, not cash because cash will go in the bottom. So what we need to prepare the statement of cash flows is a comparative balance sheet. So that means we've got a beginning balance and an ending balance, and we're gonna calculate that change, a current income statement, and then additional information. So here we have the income statement, here we have the additional information that they give us, and then here we have the balance sheet, again, the current year and the prior year, and then we've calculated the increase or the decrease between those years. So then when we go to create the statement of cash flows, um, we always start, the very first line item is always net income. Then we do um, depreciation expense. We're adding that back because it's a non-cash expense. It's an adjusting entry, and we've had a chapter on this where we're allocating the cost of that asset as we use it up to depreciation expense, but we did not write any checks. We didn't, the cash has not left the company. So we're gonna add that back. Mm -hmm. If there was any sale of the plant assets, that's gonna go down into our investing section. So we have to add back the loss or subtract out the gain here in operations because that gain or that loss would already be included in net income. So we want to adjust that. So we'd add back a loss, subtract out a gain. We may have to do some math to figure out what that is, um, but we can do that. Then we go through, and again, let me flip back to that balance sheet. So he, now this is where we pick up these changes. So a $20,000 increase in accounts receivable, 
$14,000 increase in inventory, $2,000 increase in prepaids. So then that's where we see those coming in. Now notice it's the opposite direction. So if the current asset increases, cash decreases. Now then when we go down to our payables, those go the same direction. If we decrease an accounts payable, cash decreases. Decrease interest payable, it cash decreases. Increase in our income tax payable, cash is going to increase. So the logic behind these, let's let's focus like on just a couple. So if we say inventory, if inventory increases, what must I have done? I must have gone out and purchased inventory. So that was a use of my cash. Cash goes down. Then, then let's focus down on accounts payable. If accounts payable goes down, I must have paid off a liability. So that was a use of my cash. So cash goes down. But worst case, if you can't think it through logically, just know that there's an inverse relationship with the assets. And so that I mean an opposite. So if the assets increase, cash decreases. And then there's a direct relation with the liabilities. If the liability increases, cash increases. Um, then, okay, this is explaining that we add back if there's no cash outflow. So again, the depreciation, the loss on the sale of equipment or the gain on the sale of equipment. And then these are showing us again, that kind of the rule of thumb where if the, if the current asset increases, we subtract it. If the current asset decreases, we add it. If the current liability increases, we add it. If the current liability decreases, we subtract it. And then we funnel those all through into the So then here again is the little summary. And um, this it maybe it would be a nice thing to print out because then this would show you examples of what we add back. Um, and then the, the, what do we decrease and what do we increase? I mean, if we decrease it, if it's a decrease, then do we add it? If it's an increase, we subtract it. So this might be a handy little table to print out and have with you when you're doing your homework and your test. Um, so our three-step analysis is we identify the changes in the investing-related activities. So those are going to be all of our long-term assets. Um, we determine those cash effects maybe by using T accounts or reconstructing the entries and then we put them onto the cash flow statement. So here we look at our plant assets and say, okay, it increased $400,000. But, um, and then we look down at accumulated depreciation, that increased $12,000. But then we might want to take it one step further to say, well, was there any asset sales? Was there anything else that happened? Um, so then here they tell us, okay, they purchased plant assets of $60,000 by issuing a note. So in that case, that's a non-cash investing and financing. We got an asset and we gave a liability. Um, but then we also sold an asset. So we sold assets costing $20,000 that had $12,000 of accumulated depreciation for $2,000 cash. So if we look at that, our net book value is the $20,000 minus the $12,000. So we've got an $8,000 net book value. We compare that to the $2,000 cash that we received. So we didn't do very well, right? We lost $6,000. So then we care about that loss. That loss is something we add back in our operating, um, operating section. The cash we also care about because that we're going to add into our investing. Um, and then finally, then the depreciation expense, we realize, okay, well, there was a change of $12,000. But 12,000 of that came in to, because of this sale. So then that would mean that 24,000 came in from depreciation expense. And then that too would, have, would go into our operating section. So then now what, we, what we've kind of determined as we look through these things, we have only the $2,000 coming in. That, uh, that 60,000 is again a non-cash activity which would go into the bottom of the statement. Then we do the same thing for financing. Now we identify the accounts, which would be our long-term debt and our equity. We may have to kind of reconstruct a T account and see what happened. And then we put those into the cash flow statement. So here we have long-term notes payable. It increased by $26,000.
Um, but where then we look at that to say, okay, well, what happened in there? So we know we issued that note of 60,000 because that we determined in our investing section. Um, then here we had a carrying value of $34,000 that we retired for 18,000. So we ended up with a gain on the retirement because we got rid of debt for a far less amount. So then that would be cash out in our financing activity. Then we look at common stock to say, okay, what happened with our common stock? So common stock increased $15,000, and it's because we sold 3,000 shares at $5 par value. So that would be cash coming in in the common stock and in the um, financing section. Now then retained earnings. Retained earnings is a little bit trickier. We can't just look at the change. We really kind of have to T account that out. So our balance went from 88,000 up to 112,000, but we know there's two things that go into retained earnings. Net income gets added into it and cash dividends are subtracted. So if, we, um, if, if they don't give us the cash dividend, we can back into what that number is because we'll know what net income is. Um, but in this case, they were saying that, hey, they paid the cash dividends. So that's going to be the only piece that ends up on the financing section because the net income starts the operating section. So then we get to the bottom of our cash flow statement. So we've put all of our three sections together and we've calculated our net change in cash to be a $5,000 increase. So then we add that to the prior year balance and our ending year balance is 17,000, which we would again uh, trace that out to the, in, I'm sorry, the balance sheet to make sure that that is the correct ending balance. And assuming mm -hmm. that it is, then everything is perfect. Now, if you get to that point and you don't tie out, then you want to go back and double check, you know, see how much you're off, make sure you didn't miss an item, make sure you didn't add when you should have subtracted. So there's some different little things you can do to kind of double check, but at least you'll know if you do tie out that you are most likely correct.